Hi, um, I just wanted to make this video about uh, dreams and how the Lord does give us dreams um, and visions. Uh, he has historically since the beginning of time and um, up through the New Testament and God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, it's amazing how some Christians will discount that a dream's from the Lord when biblically we can see throughout the Bible that he has given dreams and their interpretations um, to guide civilizations and kings and to comfort and to um, instruct and warn. And um, so it's to me, you know, if God's word says it, it's true. And um, so let's just look at a few verses and then um, briefly look at some examples of people in the Bible that were given dreams and visions. Um, okay, in Job 33, chapter, uh, verses 12 to 18, Job writes, Look in this, you are not righteous, I will answer you. For God is greater than man. Why do you contend with him? For he does not give an accounting of any of his words. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering upon their beds, then he opens the ears of men and steals their instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So right here, Job is um, explaining how God does give dreams and visions of the night um, while we're asleep, and he opens our ears um, to hear what the Lord is telling us um, and seals their instruction in order that they may turn from his deeds so that we can change our course of action or, um, you know, he can guide us and conceal pride from man. Also to show that it's the Lord who gives instruction and who is all knowing, not us, it's not of our flesh. Um, it's not our flesh that's having um, the dream that we say, that we know is from the Lord, um, that he gives us. It's it's God, it's his instruction, warning, or comfort. Um, so, and it conceals pride from man. Um, so whenever I have a dream and I've shared that it's from the Lord, it's not me. And I've always stated that the Lord told me because I'm not going to take credit for something that God has shown me. And it's not knowledge that I've come up with on my own. Um, he keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So a lot of times we can see, especially in the Old Testament and even with Joseph, um, when Jesus was a child, um, his stepfather Joseph was given a dream a couple times to uh, avoid going in a certain direction because the Lord showed him that um, they were seeking Jesus's life and that he needed to go the other way. So um, that's one scripture. And then we're well aware of Acts 2.17 and Joel 2.28. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Okay, so um, God, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, he, just because uh, we, ha we have the Holy Spirit and he, he's the one who instructs and guides us, but is it if he's living in us and we're the temple of the Holy Spirit, is it not logical to say that, especially since he's living in us, that he can direct and guide us in all things by giving us dreams or visions? If he gave, if the Holy Spirit worked that way, especially with the Old Testament people, Daniel and Joseph and um, Samuel, how much more so is it not possible that he works that way with us today? Um, perhaps it's because you haven't prayed to receive the gift of prophecy or, um, wisdom or knowledge. Um, he says to ask and you shall receive and to seek him and you'll find him and, um, that 
he will he will give us um, anything we ask as long as we're not seeking it for our own um, pleasures or benefit. So um, I just believe that it's just a one um, doubt is never from the Lord. Um, doubt was the first tool used by Satan to um, deceive Eve and then um, Adam into disobeying the the one and only true living God. So um, if you have doubt um, that he can work that way through a vision or a dream, or um, you mock other people that do have that gift, or um, you just flat out don't believe it, then your issue really isn't with that person. It's with um, the word of God, because the word of God is clear that he has and he does um, speak to his servants this way um, and more so in some than others because everyone has different gifts. But if one person has that gift and another person doesn't, it's not it's not really fair to mock them as you as if you were not a believer yourself. Um, there's already enough mocking and criticizing and um contention going on, you know, between believers and non-believers. And then when somebody like, for example, if somebody mocks me for, you know, oh yeah, well, even my mom, she hears voices and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and, um, you know, but she's living in blah, 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 you know, like a crazy house and takes medication. Okay. Well, if a, another Christian is telling me that, that's, first of all, it's a lack of it's a lack of faith on their part because, and a lack of belief of um, believing in the word and what it says. Um, I'm not claiming to hear voices while I'm awake. Um, I, I'm simply sharing what I, the, the dreams that he's shown me that are prophetic. Not every dream I have is prophetic. And I know that, but as you, um, if you have that gift, then, um, you'll just, you know, um, which ones are from the Lord and which ones aren't, especially if you're praying for a certain situation and guidance and the Lord shows you. Um, so anyways, I don't think there's, there's already enough mocking and persecuting, um, be, you know, that the non-Christians give and send to the believers. So for fellow brothers and sisters to mock what they don't understand, um, or believe, that the scripture teaches, then, um, it's disheartening and it's, it's a little sad anyways. So people that have had dreams biblically, we know that, um, Joseph had dreams and he was the youngest of his brothers. And then there was Benjamin after him. Um, he had dreams, uh, they were prophetic and, um, he wasn't given time or dates or such. But like when he had the dream that his father, mother, and brothers would bow down to wor and worship, you know, give obedience to him, um, which happened many years later when Pharaoh put him in charge of his his lands um, concerning the dreams from the baker and the cupbearer about the famine coming. Um, so in this case, Joseph foresaw that the Lord showed him that, and probably be because he was given this dream before his brother sold him into slavery. Um, they wanted to kill him, but then the oldest brother said, no, let's not kill him and have his blood on our hands. So then they put him in a pit and then they sold him to some trade, um, slave traders that were walking by and merchants. So, um, I believe perhaps the Lord showed Joseph this so that he, he knew, um, that later, even after being in, you know, a slave and being in prison, that the ultimate, um, his ultimate destiny, um, plan that God had for him was to be, um, someone in position. And that did come true. And he wasn't given a date because some people say, well, you, you know, it'd be really awesome if you could have a date for that earthquake, you know, that's going to come. Or, if, you know, if you could give me a date or a location or something like that, that'd be, that'd be, now that'd be awesome. That'd be, you know, then, so people would believe it if there was a date attached. But um, Joseph wasn't given a date and he had to suffer many things before his dream came to pass. So um, 
just FYI there. Um, many, most of the time, almost all the, the biblical examples that I see, nobody was given specific dates, even of when Jesus was going to arrive as the Messiah on the scene. Um, there was many prophecies about him, become, you know, coming into the world and um, dying for us in Isaiah and such, but there were no dates. Okay. All right. And so who else was having dreams as when Joseph was? Well, there was obviously the cupbearer and the baker who were in prison with him and they ha each had a dream, but they couldn't interpret. They didn't understand what it meant. And it was a symbolic dream. Um, but Joseph prayed and Joseph, God gave him the knowledge to interpret that. And so his interpretations were accurate um, because the um, baker did lose his head and the cupbearer was given back his position to be the cupbearer for Pharaoh. And then that's how a couple years later, he recalled the man who interpreted his dream and told the Pharaoh when he was having a distressing dream who it was. And that's how Joseph got back in, you know, got released from prison and given the position as his um, right hand man. So Pharaoh had a dream too, and he couldn't interpret it. All the ones in scripture that all the people who had a dream and it was troubling them because like they would have it repeatedly or they knew because they remembered it so visually that it was, it meant something but they couldn't understand what it meant. Um, it was a dream from the Lord, um, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit to interpret it for them. And um, they would seek their wise men, but a lot of them, some of them weren't Christians or being led by God. So eventually God would, you know, if it was meant to be, um, they would find that man, Joseph or Daniel, that could interpret the dream for them. And in this case, in Pharaoh's case, it was Joseph. And um, so... And then we know that um, Saul, who was a king um, that was chosen by the people because he was so um, powerful looking and, you know, looked like a king. So they chose Saul and um, he was distressed. He had lots of bouts of depression and he had um, dreams that troubled him. And um, then, you know, Samuel was the one that... Um, he could uh, go to and Samuel was chosen by God and was God spoke to him and gave him visions and dreams as well. All right. Um, so he was a boy and then a man of God. And then um, also there was Nebuchadnezzar who was an evil king and his dream troubled him so much. Um, he knew that it was from the Lord, but he didn't or from a God, but he didn't understand what it meant and he wanted to. And so Daniel was the one that interpreted the dream for him. And um, Daniel was a man chosen by God and was a, was lived a holy life um, and was given dreams and their interpretations. Um, and then in the New Testament, we know that Joseph um, was given the dream to that Mary was going to conceive and give birth to Jesus and um, then also warned in two different dreams to turn a different way when after the child was born so that um, uh, Herod, King Herod, wouldn't um, kill him. And um, the wise men were also warned in a dream not to return to Herod. Um, and then Pontius Pilate's wife was uh, had a dream and God warned her to tell her husband not to harm this man, this holy man, um, although he didn't, you know, he succumbed to the um, the Pharisees, uh, the, the Jewish leaders' demands to have him um, kept in incarceration and crucified against his ultimate willingness to let him go. Um, but Pontius Pilate's wife had a dream and... Um, so there's many more examples in scriptures that the Lord uses um, dreams and visions to uh, give us further insight or um, warn of us warn us of um, things to come, judgment or direction that we should take, um, a course of action, or in some cases to comfort us. Um, 
to give us insight for the future because things may be coming that are hard to handle, like in Joseph's case, um, being sold into slavery and such, but then ultimately knowing the end from the beginning, God giving you that foreknowledge so that you're not, um, so that you're consoled and not in despair, um, during those times. And biblically, well, most of the, um, you know, most of the, um, prophets, um, that knew of God's direction and such, and were given things to say and to go and tell people they weren't, um, they weren't really liked, um, because they usually would say things that people didn't want to hear. Um, so anyways, um, the false prophets, of course, there are false prophets and, um, those are the ones that usually with the old Testament Kings would, <clears throat> sorry, give words of comfort and, um, they would tell the Kings what their ears wanted to hear. Um, they would like their positions and they would sometimes just say things that weren't from the Lord just so that, um, the, the leaders or the Kings would be pleased with what they heard and they would keep them in their position. They would keep those prophets in their position, although, um, they were speaking presumptuously and they were just saying things, um, to make people feel good and to turn also to turn away, turn those people away from the one true living God, to turn people away from the Lord. So that's how we can test a true prophet. And um, I don't think I've said anything that I, the only ways of comfort the Lord's given me dreams of is um, when he's given me a dream for myself and told me in five months, you'll receive your son that I was waiting to adopt. And it did occur um, because I was in such distress, but it wasn't I've never received a dream um, with words of comfort to give to somebody else um, to make them feel good or anything. And usually the dreams he's given me, like the earthquake that's coming to California and um, uh, just other other things, um, like he gave me a vision two nights ago about um, just a vision of an earthquake symbol, like an earthquake warning symbol. And, um, so, uh, just like to remind me that it's coming. Um, and then he gave me the dream that it was for judgment before. So usually they're not good things. And people say, Oh, you're just causing fear. Well, it's, I'm not causing fear. If they have fear, it's, it's maybe because they're not, you know, they're not trusting in the Lord, but, um, I'm just sharing what, what he shared with me. And, um, then it's up to you to pray and, um, decide whether you want to be ready for an earthquake here in California or not. And if you want to, um, believe in Jesus and his word. And, um, it's just, it's disheartening to me again. I, I'm going to wrap this up with it's disheartening to me when, um, the Bible is very clear on a topic and, um, people choose to just avoid or disregard it. Um, if we're going to believe in God and the God of the Bible, um, then we need to believe in his whole word and not just pick parts of scripture to stand firm in and then disregard other parts as, oh, well, that's just outdated or old because Jesus was here 2000 years ago. That's pretty old, but are we going to dis discount him and put him on the side and not believe that he was true and existed and still lives just because it's been so long? Or are we going to believe that he is Jesus Christ and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Thank you.